Hi my lovelies and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be my tips on travelling with a baby. So we did a lot of travelling with Noah in his first year um, and I had loads of requests to do this video and I just never got around to it. I think it's a year and a half now. Um, but now that it is a summer holidays and everybody's going away, I thought it'd be a really good time to let you guys know what my tips are and what our kind of experience was travelling with him. I know a lot of people always a bit worried about traveling with a baby and they don't know what the best time to do it is and you know whether whether it's going to be a waste of money because you don't want to go away and then it just be hectic the whole time and um, so I thought I've, I would kind of impart my words of wisdom on you guys today if you like this video then make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't already if you have subscribed hit the notification button because then you'll be notified every time I upload I do try and upload every weekend but my A, my internet is rubbish, and B, sometimes I fall behind schedule. Um, so sometimes it goes up on a different day, but if you are like notified, then every time I upload, you will get a notification. Yeah, I guess that's that's the way of saying it. Also, my makeup today is like a little bit extra. I did, wouldn't normally do it like this for a YouTube video, but I just filmed an Eid, um makeup tutorial for my Instagram TV. So if you're not following me on Instagram, I will leave all of the links below so make sure you go check out my instagram tv and my instagram channel no my instagram page go check out my instagram page because i do upload daily on there and i like do um a couple of ig videos a week as well so i'm more active on there than i am on youtube um but anyway enough with the rambling and let's get on with the video so if you're planning on traveling with a baby my best advice is if you want to enjoy the holiday yourself if you don't have any other kids and it's just the two of you or you're going with a group of friends um the best time to travel is when the baby's under five months i feel like that's the easiest time if you want to go on holiday because you want your baby to enjoy the holiday i think waiting till they're about 10 or 11 months is the best time so i'm going to kind of go through our experiences in chunks so whilst noah was under five months we traveled three times we went to uh, marrakesh in morocco antalya in turkey and istanbul in turkey in marrakesh it was the easiest travel experience with him even though it was our first time going we didn't really know what we were doing we didn't really know what to expect he slept so much he slept pretty much the whole holiday so really i don't think if you want if you want the baby to enjoy it they're not they're not going to know what's going on so don't do it for the baby do what you want to go and do it for you if you want to do any long haul flights do them when they're that age honestly he just slept the whole way through. He slept. I think it was it was only like a four hour flight to all of the destinations. Marrakesh might have been slightly less. Um, but it's so easy. Like literally as soon as you get on the plane, you either breastfeed them or give them their bottle. That like when they're sucking, it helps their ears to pop so that they're not disturbed by, um, I don't even know what it is, but as it takes off and as it lands. Um, and it's just so easy. And they're quite small and light at that stage as well. So if they're on your lap, you don't really feel it whereas now with Noah especially because he's a little bit chunky it's like you know I'm like I'll do an hour and Fazan can do an hour so it does get more difficult as they get bigger and older and they're more active um so my best recommendation is if you want to enjoy your holiday go in those first few months in terms of like what to take and what to expect don't overpack that's the mistake I made don't take everything because you're worried because um, the reality is wherever you're going there's going to be babies then you'll be able unless it's like a remote island like the Maldives you'll be able to get everything that you need in most places um, secondly in terms of things that you need you definitely need like a travel pushchair I'm so glad we didn't try and take our normal pushchair because it would have been annoying the travel pushchair was a little bit big for him um, but we still have it we've used it for every single trip I will leave the link below um, it just really folds up and some airlines let you take it all the way to until you board some let you take it on deck so having something that, that re goes really small is just helps so much but when you're going through security they will want to check the push chair so don't do what i did and just put loads of like you know like all your extra bags and stuff because you can't be bothered to carry them you put them in the push chair you will have to take them all out and if you're in a rush it's a nightmare and just trying to logistically get the baby out get all the bags that hold everything get the push chair through get the bags through it's a nightmare so keep your hand luggage and anything you put in in the chair in the push chair minimal so i'd recommend the travel push chair a backpack for the baby i never wore a backpack in my life but after having noah and after traveling with noah backpacks are honestly my go-to because they're so easy you have them on your back you don't even know that they're there you can hold the baby and you can hold something in your hand if you need to so even if you're traveling solo it just makes it a lot easier um I would recommend uh, like a bum bag. So put your passports, your money, your phone, um, 
padlock keys, anything important in the bum bag, have the backpack with the baby stuff, I would recommend at that age. Obviously, if you're bottle feeding the bottles and the formula, you can get hot, hot water from a, a coffee place or on, on the flight. You can get a bottle of water on the flight and you can mix the two up to get the water and then put the formula in and make their milk if you need to do that. Muslin cloths, I would take one nappy per hour. So if it's like a four hour flight, and then obviously you've got like, you need to be there two hours before, and then maybe you'll be there a couple of hours after when you land and by the time you get to the hotel. For like that four hour flight, I'd recommend about eight nappies. They might not go through them, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. And then obviously your wipes. So at that age, they don't need any toys. Don't take any toys. Obviously if they have a dummy, take a dummy. Um, they don't really get sick that early on, but maybe if you if you want to take cowpole or something, take cowpole. But that is it. So nappies, wipes, milk, muslin cloth. What else did I say? <laughs> Dummy and cowpole. Um, you can take a change of a spare pair of clothes. I took one for Noah every single time, and we never needed it. But my mum said that when she travelled with us when we were younger, um, my brother was sick quite a few times, and then she would have to change him and herself. So I always took like a spare pair of leggings and a spare tunic for myself um, in like the backpack and a spare pair of clothes for Noah, but we never really needed it. So that's like for the flight, um, don't take anything extra. Like honestly, before when I used to travel on my own, I'm like, why did I used to take such a big, big bag? No, don't. Because I normally has like the camera equipment on his back um, because we don't like putting that in the hold luggage, but everything else goes in hold. The first time when we went to Marrakesh, we took all of Noah's stuff in the hand luggage because I was so scared that we were going to lose it because his formula was in there and the rest of his nappies and his clothes. Um, I've never lost, Alhamdulillah, I've never lost any luggage anywhere. I mean, it can happen and it does happen, but it's very rare and that extra stress of having that well, with everything else, because we have like a million blankets as well. You don't need a million blankets, one is enough. Um, we just had so much stuff that it, it just got really hectic trying to like hold and know what to hold. So keep it simple. In terms of um, blankets and stuff, so one blanket is normally enough. Also, if you want to carry the baby, I would recommend a carrier. Like I said, some uh, airlines let you take the pusher all the way to the flight and give it to you as soon as you get off, but others you have to like walk to the belt and get the pusher off the belt so you would have to hold the baby if you're okay holding the baby cool but sometimes like especially when they're that small it is easier just to um have a baby carrier or a sling and do it like that in terms of what to pack for the holiday so i always take plus two so if you're going for five days do five outfits plus two if you're going somewhere hot i would still obviously you take everything that you need including the sunscreen and caps and things like that but always just take a jacket um, and a woolly hat just in case. You never know whether it can sometimes get bad. Marrakesh one day was 27 and one day, the day we got there it was raining. So you never know. Um, so I think if you're going to hot climate, always take just one warm outfit just in case and vice versa. If you're going to a cold climate, take one warm outfit just in case. I guess it's easier in a, in a colder climate because if it does get warmer, you can just strip them down into um, you know, their, their vest and a pair of trousers or just take their sleep, the, their baby girl off or their jacket off or something. So that is easier. But if you are going somewhere warm, especially when they're under five months, take a hat, take just, just, just in case you don't want them to get cold. In terms of routine, we didn't really stick to Noah's routine for those first three trips that we did. He didn't really have a routine. So he kind of slept wherever we went. We did take him everywhere. Not everywhere is convenient for babies, so you kind of have to get used to knowing how to change the nappy in the push jet if you can't find baby changing facilities. But that it's, I mean, it's so easy. You don't have to look for a toilet or anything. Just on the push chair, change him. The first couple of times it's a bit awkward and after that you're like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want my baby to be clean and you're happy to, um, to change him over. One thing I will mention that I learned from our trip in Marrakesh was we split the holiday. So we stayed in a traditional Riyadh for a few days and then we stayed in a modern hotel. Um, if you're traveling with a baby, a modern hotel is always like just, it's just so much more convenient. Um, you have all of the facilities, you have everything you need. Um, staying in a Riyadh can be difficult, especially like the one we stayed in didn't have a lift. So we left the lift, have to leave the buggy downstairs um, and just sterilising bottles and things like that was a bit difficult whereas in the more modern hotel honestly it was it was just so relaxed and so chill I didn't have to worry about anything and actually after Antalya we were supposed to go to Cappadocia for a few days which if you guys have seen the pictures it's the place in Turkey with all the hot air balloons but all the ho most of the hotels are like in caves um, so after our experience in Marrakesh I was like no 
I'm not staying in a cave in the nowhere. Um, and although it's somewhere that me and Fazan really wanted to go, we cancelled. So I guess, you know, when you are booking a holiday, when they're under five months, the world is your oyster. You can do pretty much most places, but I would avoid like a remote island where you're not going to be able to get everything you need. And I would avoid places that don't really have modern facilities. They're like my two main tips in terms of what you're looking at when you're booking. So the next sort of stage, like five to 10 months, I would say avoid traveling if you can. When we were in in Antalya, um, Basim and her husband were there and their little baby Liana, she was there as well. No, I think it was five, five months or maybe four and a half. And Liana was like six and a half and Liana was teething at the time. So I saw that and I was like, nope. I'm not traveling with him when he's teething. Like when, when babies are teething, it's just difficult. Even when you're at home and you've got everything you need, it can be stressful. They poo all the time. Now I used to do like these just explosive poos. Um, and it, like even with really good nappies, they just leaked all the time. So um, we try to avoid traveling at all. We did do one trip. We went to Mykonos in September when he was eight months. It was nice in that like he was more um, aware of where we were and things that were happening but it was still tough because there isn't really much to do in Mykonos. It's absolutely stunning but we didn't get good weather. We got rain and wind um, and it was supposed to be like you know it's like a beach. It's like a little island. It's a Greek island so it's supposed to be beaches and sunshine and relaxing. Um, we were in the hotel every day by eight o'clock. We had room service every night. We didn't get to go out for dinner. We didn't really enjoy the holiday. So even though it's a beautiful island and I like the fact that, you know, we went and we, we did it, in hindsight, I probably just wouldn't do it again. I just feel like it's a waste of money. You don't get to do everything that you want to do. Um, and it's a little bit stressful when you get back, you're like, I need another holiday. So in terms of packing, it's so much harder to pack between five and 10 months because most of the time this is when you'll be weaning the baby and they'll be eating and they might not be eating solid food. When we went to Mykonos, I literally had a bag full of others pouches um, just because I didn't know what type of food we were gonna have and whether he would eat it and whether I'd wanna give it to him. Um, it, kind of, it, it wasn't as bad as it sounds because I think I had, we went for five or six days and I had like, three pouches per day so I had a lot and I had snacks in the backpack as well so that was the difference so in the backpack it was the same as before maybe a couple of less nappies a couple of food pouches lots of different snacks um I think we took toys and again I don't think he was at, at he was interested in toys at that age what I did do was download um a couple of things on onto the phone so that he could watch that on the flight and that really really helped to keep him distracted um and even in Mykonos when we were out and about I would play it for him if he was like getting a bit restless and that helped but in terms of the food side of things um if you're going for longer than five or six days then obviously you'll have to either pack that much or make sure that you can get the food that you want to feed your baby on the other side especially if your baby has a specific diet or if you like to like prepare everything at home i think it would be a lot harder whereas like with the ellis pouches they're all like sealed um so I know that they won't go off until like I open them and he eats them and he has to eat them like within a few hours or they have to be refrigerated. Whereas if you're a mum who likes to kind of do everything themselves and make it organic, I think that would be a little bit harder. So I think when babies turn one, they stop being babies. So the last trip we did with Noah was for his birthday. We went to Rome. The flight was only two hours, so it was relatively easy. And I think by that point, we kind of knew what to pack um, and how to kind of just get on with it. And it was a lot easier. The difficulties that we had was he wasn't walking, so he wasn't running around, so that was one good thing. If you've got a one-year-old that walks, then they're gonna wanna be in everything, and that's difficult. So try and do as much before they walk if you can. Um, so he wasn't walking, so that was fine. The weather was okay, so we got to go out and about. The difficult thing was that he did, he did have a routine by the time he was one, so he was going to bed at a certain time, you know, he had his nighttime routine, he was waking up in the morning at a certain time, and he was having his nap at a certain time. Um, so we would be out and about when he'd have his nap and it meant that he either missed what we were doing and he's at an age now where he can take things in and obviously because we went for his birthday we wanted him to take things in but like he'd be sleeping for two or three hours during the day. Um, so obviously you have to bear that in mind and secondly when you are out and about and they're having their nap they might not have their full nap and then that can make them grumpy um, and just fussy for the rest of the day. Um, so just, just bear that in mind as well. In terms of the flight, 
because he was a little bit older, he was taking things in, he was saying hi to people, um, hi to the airline stuff. So I think that was nicer as well because it felt like he not understood what we were doing or where we were going, but understood that like this was different and this was new. Um, and just seeing him enjoy those experiences was really nice. And like, even though he'd been flying before and he'd been traveling before, I think that was the first time that like, we were like, oh, isn't it cute? And it kind of felt like his first time doing stuff, if that makes sense. So in terms of packing and what we took differently, I took a lot less clothes just because I feel like he doesn't need as many clothes changes uh, at age one as he did when he was younger. Um, he's less likely to sick up milk or have a leak nappy or anything along those lines. I also didn't take any food pouches just because he weaned off them by then and he was actually eating food. Um, Italy was easy because I think he just, you know, like pasta sauce, pasta, bread, chips, that kind of thing he eats. Um, but I think if we went somewhere a little bit different, it might have been more difficult in terms of what I could have fed him or what he would have been happy to eat. So I think that's something that you have to bear in mind when you're looking at where you're going. Um, is your baby gonna be able to eat the food that they have there? And if not, are you then gonna be able to go and find alternatives to feed your baby? Um, and also in terms of like destination, I wouldn't look for somewhere too far. He didn't sleep on the flight there or on the flight back at all. I think that it was only two hours, two or three hours, so it wasn't too bad. Um, in terms of what to pack in the suitcase, I always still follow the same rule of however many days we're going, plus one extra, and then um, one for like cold weather and one for hot weather, just in case. Um, still taking his milk, still taking his bottles. One thing that I found really useful for his backpack was these um, Robinson's like instant squash little things that you get. So it's really small, it's like that, but it has 10 or 12 um, bottles of squash in it. So you only need to squeeze a tiny amount and then you top it up with water. And because he's at an Asian hour and he loves to drink water, or he loves to drink squash, um, so it just meant that if we were out and about, I didn't always have to make him milk. I could just get a bottle of water, pour that in, squeeze in a little bit of squash and just give it to him. And A, it keeps him entertained and B, it keeps him hydrated. Um, so that was really easy. And it's just such a small packet that it's, it just literally just goes into the backpack. Um, and you're not having to carry like a huge Robinson squash bottle around with you or anything like that. So the last trip that we did with Noah was Dubai. He was... I want to say 14 or 15 months at the time. It was the hardest one we've done. He didn't sleep the whole way there. He didn't sleep the whole way back. So that's a seven hour flight. He was walking, he was running around everywhere. It was exhausting. Like I was just, when we got back, I was like, we are not doing that again. It was nice in that when we were there and we went out, he really enjoyed it. He enjoyed the swimming pool. He enjoyed the beach. Um, we did come into a bit of difficulty where sometimes we'd have something planned by the time we'd get there he'd be asleep so on a couple of occasions I was like well we've come all the way here we're paying for this let's wake him up and we, we would wake him up to do whatever activity we'd gone out to do with him like we planned the whole holiday around him um and I think that was a little bit unfair on him but I just wanted like once he was awake he was fine but then I was kind of disturbing his sleep um so I think you have to as they get older I think between like one and one and a half or maybe even two you just have to be really careful with what you plan in terms of activities um kind of keep it to one a day like a relaxing holiday by the pool and the beach i just think would be so easy because kids love that um and i wouldn't do anything more than like a two or three hour flight we are planning another trip soon inshallah like depending on if we can get it done in time because <laughs> my cutoff date for this pregnancy is like looming but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do Dubai again. I wouldn't, Dubai's lovely and I love Dubai, but I think I'd wait until he was like four or five and he understood that we were flying and he would watch the TV and you know, he would enjoy the whole experience because I think it was just for him to be in one confined space for seven hours, that was really difficult. Um, and even on the way back, what he didn't understand was that when, the t when turbulence happens and you have to stay like buckled in the seat, he just didn't want to. Um, I think the flight back was harder than the flight there. The flight there, we were like excited and it was all fun. Whereas on the flight back, we just have the, we just had this holiday and it was really fun, but we were also really tired. So we were just like, now we'll go to sleep. And he didn't want to. Um, so, I mean, I would do it again. I just wouldn't go that far. I'd probably do somewhere like Spain, which is only a couple of hours. Um, so like, you know, you can still get to enjoy the holiday without having the stress of the a long haul flight. I don't even think seven hours is long haul. I would definitely not do anything longer than seven. You know, when people, when I see people traveling to like the Maldives or Mauritius or um, Bali or somewhere with kids, I'm like, 
how are you doing that? It's insane. I mean, I guess if you have a really, really good baby and you're really organised and you have a lot of patience, which I don't, um, then it's okay. But for me, I just personally wouldn't be able to do it. So I think this was a bit of a long rambly video, but I hope you guys found it useful. I kind of tried to share my experiences and my top tips for what I would do. One thing I would say is that every single child is different. Some children are just so chill and some are really fussy. And if you have a really fussy child who is... It's, it's quite hard to manage when you have a day out locally then maybe going on a holiday especially a long one um, a long haul flight might be a bit more difficult for you I think as a parent you're in the best best position to decide is this going to be worth it or is it not um, and there's no harm in waiting I mean I love me and Fazan love traveling but now that we've got a second one on the way I don't think we're going to do anything I think it's it's hard enough for one hard enough with one but I think with two we'll probably try and wait like a year or so before we start traveling or just take his mum or my mum with, with us so we have a bit of help um because otherwise it is a bit of a struggle and at the end of the day I would much rather not do any holidays for their first few years even if that means that we're absolutely shattered and we need a holiday um I wouldn't do anything for the first few years and then maybe when they're like when the when the kids are like four and five or three and four and they understand a bit better then go somewhere so that they can actually enjoy it and we can I mean it's still hard kids are kids kids are always hard um but then we can enjoy it a little bit more as well um anyways I do think I am really really rambling now um but I hope you guys found this video useful if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you all soon inshallah